What's going on, Verbal Judo Nation? All right. I have been asked by a lot of people and can't really find much information in a video source out there for how to cut an old. Um, there's no secret to what I do. Um, I'm just looking for that um, desired sound. And I'm going to walk you through how I would cut an old and show you what the finished sound will be like. So let's get this thing started. All right. <clears throat> so what we've got, we've got an old PSO Eels uh, keyhole. That's what we're going to be modifying today. Got a pair of scissors, X-Acto knife. Got some uh, pre-cut 14 mil reeds file. This is what I used to push my cork in and out of the call. Just an old pick. Got some uh, 14 mil reeds again, different cuts on them, a file. And I've got some 220 and some 120 grit sandpaper. And uh, let's get this thing started. Alrighty, so let's get started with kind of the basics. So what I do is, this has got an old piece of cork in there. Let's just knock that out. And what I'm doing is I'm just kind of examining the tone board, see what kind of shape it's in. Hasn't been touched, molested, doesn't have no splits, anything of the sort. So what I do is I'll take a file, hold it down, and just barely run it in there just to make sure at least that corner is perfectly square, not really removing material, but just make sure it's got a good squared slot for the reed to set in. Okay, so before we even cut, tune, or do anything, let's get an idea of kind of where this bad boy is at, just like it sits. So what I'll do is I'll cut a reed down, something like that right there, and let's go ahead and size up our cork notch. So what I'll do here is I will cut just a hair bigger than what I need, and we'll go straight across there. That cork don't want to cut too good. Okay. What I'll do is I'll check for size. That's almost perfect. So let's get that in there. I'm gonna wetten it down so that when I push it in, it doesn't put a, a lot of extra pressure on the cork notch. And now we'll seat this in there just like so. That's where my little pick comes in. It's a good tight fit here. So now what we'll do is we'll basically just cut off that extra. All right, so let's just give this thing a rundown before we ever even touch it or do anything to it. So I can tell that the reed is too long, comes over, locks up against the end of the tone channel. So we'll shorten it up just a hair. And guys, on these cut down reeds, trim from the bottom so that you keep your, um, whatever you're looking for on the top, whether it be a dagger cut, what I would call more traditional kind of rounded top. Um, make all your cuts from the bottom where it's flat. That way you don't really change your sound. You're just making it, whether it's easy to blow, hard to blow, anything of the sort. So let's get our cork set back down in there, like so. <laughs> Obviously cut that one too short, but that's okay, because we're gonna cut and modify, and I've got an idea which read I'm gonna run anyway. So what I wanna do here, is I'm gonna start with some 220 and actually I'm gonna start with some 120. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just kind of go off the front of that tone board and then I'll give you an idea of uh, kind of where the reed sets and how it looks. Again, not losing a lot of pressure. Just slowly taking some off. So let's go with this dagger cut right here. 
And I'm gonna go ahead and cut her down to length, get pretty close. About right there. And I'm gonna set this in there and I'm gonna show you guys kind of what it's looking like. All right, let's get that bad boy seated. So before we go any further, just to give you an idea, I hope you guys can see that. That's kind of where we're at. Obviously the reed's pretty long. We're gonna shorten that up as we go. But you can kind of see where we're at. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off about where my finger's at. Kind of get rid of a little bit right there. But let's give it a sample sound anyway. So obviously, still a little hard to blow. But I've got some tone board I wanna take away right there in the middle. And then we'll shorten our reed up a little bit. So again, right now, I'm using the 120 and just lightly taking off a little bit of material right through that midsection. And then we'll come out here on the end, very, very tip, kind of push down a little bit more. Okay, so now our reed's gonna have to be just a little bit shorter. But we're not gonna take much off. So let's seat this back in there, see where we're at. Again, just a fresh wet. Couldn't tell you how old this one is. It does have the registered trademark number on there. So you history buffs ought to be able to tell me kind of the year range. So now we've created just a little bit more gap, a little further up in there. Probably still gonna be a little hard to blow, but let's give it a run. ahead and take off just a little bit more okay so we seat this thing back in there get an idea where we're at and then we'll go from there on what do I want to do where do I want to remove tone board to acquire that sound that I'm looking for but outside of that hope you guys are enjoying thus far um, again this is just basics on how to cut an old everybody's got their own set way um, i've got a few little things that i like to do um, on round holes and whatnot uh, all right so we're still hard to blow we're still coming down and locking that tone channel up so if you see right there see how flat we are against that so now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna work down here toward the tip a little bit to make sure our air can stay up under there, keep that reed just a popping. So again, I'm gonna go back to the 120. And again, not a lot of pressure. I'm not gonna remove a lot of material. Just enough. Just staying right there on the end. Okay, now let's reseat it and let's go again. So, you know, a couple things that I can tell you, um, I'm not a guy that cuts a lot of these. I only cut uh, so many of them a year. I enjoy it, but I don't want there to be a thousand of them out there. Not all oats are created equal, and some of them old ones, some of them are slightly curved. They don't, they don't all act the same. Again, you can get the desired effects and the sound that you want, but they're not all created equal due to the mold processing back in the day and whatnot. <laughs> but I can see when I push that reed down right there and I get right there, I can't see my tone channel anymore. So again, I wanna stay from the end of the tone channel to the very end. And let's unseat this. All right, so now I'm gonna to switch to the 220. I don't wanna remove as much material, but I really just wanna stay right there on the end so that when I lay that reed flat, that air can still get up underneath there and make that reed pop without it air locking. Okay, so let's go back at it again. Gonna reset this. What, Bubba? 
Yeah, we might go here in a minute. Let me finish this up, okay? All right, so now we've got it in. And when I push that down, I'm starting to see my tone channel when it's all the way down. So we know we're getting, I know I'm getting closer. So I hear that locking up. Again, when that reed slaps down, the neck, the air pushing up underneath it's kind of locking up my tone channel. So I'm gonna take off just on the very tip and I'll show you guys kind of where I'm pointing at. What I'm wanting to do is stay between right here and right here so that when that reed comes down, I can still see a small gap here so that when I lay flat, the air is still going up under the reed and doesn't air lock it. So back to the 220. And we're only staying, I keep my fingertip on the edge of the tone channel so I know that I don't want to go past my fingertip when I'm sanding. Some people use a file for this, that's perfectly fine, but I've got a precision level plate that I made it work. It gives me a flat surface, so I take the same amount of material off each side. So let's reseat this thing one more time. Get an idea where we're at. All right, so to me, the reed's just still a hair too long. So before we take any off, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come on that back side and take just another sliver off the back side. Push that out there. And again, what I'm going for is the dagger cut on this reed. And we can cut a regular one and see what it sounds like as well when we get where we want. But let's try to give this one a run. this point what I want to do is I'm going to take off just a little bit more down here on the end and I'm going to remove just a hair back up here close to the cork notch and let's see what that does so so again fingertip into the cone channel I want to stay just right there I'm just working through the end I'm gonna go back, remove just a little bit of material through that midsection, staying out of the cork notch. Don't want nothing going on in that cork notch. Because I want my reed to set in there the exact same way. So, come on reed, there we go. All right, let's get this set back in there. Okay. So, let's see what this sounds like. This one that's already cut, it's gonna give me an idea kind of where I wanna be. And we'll start there. Right we'll there, just like so. Let's set this in there. Probably gonna be uh, a hair hard to blow out of the gate, but we'll clean that up. So here we are. take off just a little bit more right there toward the front. I want to make it freed up so that it doesn't lock up no matter how hard you run it.
Okay. I'm gonna switch back over to this dagger cut. See where we're at on that. We should be pretty close to our desired results. Again, pretty close. <laughs> It's not letting me just rip it wide open. And I'm putting a boatload of air through this thing. So again, we're just gonna kind of work the end of that board down just a little bit, end of my fingertip. Just stay in that range. A little bit at a time. And then when we get the final result, what I'll do is I'll put just a standard, normal, regular cut down reed in it that doesn't have a dagger cut anything of the sort going on with it and make sure that's exactly what I wanted it was a dagger cut or an original. Again, you want raspy, you want it clean. <laughs> so again, we're still kind of right there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take just a hair off of our dagger. Maybe it's too easy to blow now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set that dagger cut off to the side. We're gonna throw one more reed up in here. I'll get one out of my box. And uh, let's go ahead and get this bad boy cut down to size. So again, I'm just kind of eyeballing it. May have to take a hair, may have to take a hair off that. And we may dagger cut it while it's in there and play again with the sound. So again, there's lots of ideas, guys. Lots of little things that you can do that'll keep it you or how you wanna do this. This is my representation of how I go through cutting an old to make sure that it's what I want. How do I want it to sound? Um, this one hasn't given me any bits. Uh, I did one with a friend of mine and I think we spent an hour on playing with it. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dagger cut this inside of the coal. And I can't cut even to save my life, but we're gonna try. Let's see what that does. Just a snippet, and I think we're there, man. So there you guys have it. I'm pretty happy with this one. Uh, Hope you enjoyed the video. Drop a comment. I uh, hope this kind of points you guys in the right direction. Um, I got a couple more little things I'm going to do with the barrel and whatnot, but there you have it. How to cut a PSO. Migration denied calls. Thank you guys for watching and uh, migration denied. <laughs>